Hello, this is Brent Porcia at TopLossy.net. I'm going to do a pitch analysis here for Cameron. And I'm going to pair him up with, this is the Japanese pitcher for the Dragons. He's an odd looking dude, but I'm going to, his name is Takuya Asio. I don't know. I gave, I tried. Found him online, uh, surfing around. Pretty awesome mechanics. He's like a Lensicum clone, but I mean, look at this. this is about... 5, 10, height, weight, about 165. So, a uh, little guy, but look at his velocities here. Average velocity with this fastball is, is low to mid-90s. Every now and then he gets up to 97, 96, 97 he's gotten up there. But, you know, if he was a little bigger guy, he could be probably a 95 to 100 guy. Um, just because he is a little, he's a little bitty guy. He's probably smaller than Linscombe. Um But just his mechanics are impeccable. I mean, it's really something to watch. Uh, the you know the Japanese are very disciplined. They play about you know eleven months out of a year. It almost seems like so they're they constantly are training at the game. They're very explosive athletes. So they they train very explosively. Um, so. You know, it's I just I like their approach. I like most of their pitchers, and I think the reason they're so competitive now is because they really know what they're doing. Um, so there's a lot to learn from. So I thought we'd use him uh, to pair up with Cameron here. All right, so let's take Cameron to his leg lift. We'll take call him uh, a a sow. It's probably a sow. Let's probably say it. Oh, it's gonna be fun saying that. Okay. All right, let's, we got him in his leg lift. We got Cameron in his leg lift. Now look what uh, uh, he's doing really well. I'm just going to call him um, the Japanese pitcher. <laughs> well, look what he's doing really well. He's closing off knee. He's pulling that knee back. And look at the weight that he has already forward. So you see the harder throwers get going earlier and they get going faster. And you'll see them at the right as that leg lift is starting to come down. So that would be... Right there, right as that leg lift starting to come down, you see that they have their head and their front hip is definitely inside their drive leg. If anything, we'll see the knee starting to push inside the drive leg. They already have this weight for, excuse me. So we can see here with Cameron, I think he's a little bit too balanced up. It's hard to tell. I don't have an exact side position. I was just trying to get that, but we can work with this, you know. But it, he, you just look a little too balanced up. You, what, you really want to close this knee off, so bring the knee back to the drive leg foot like this. And that what that does is it, it kicks your hip out and makes it easier for you to push your weight out early uh, in the leg lift inside the drive leg. And it's also coiling you up. It, it's closing your hips off even more, and we know that we can potentially build more power through the stride the longer our hips stay closed. Because once our hips open... We're pretty much done producing power. We don't want that to happen until front foot strike. And the critical thing here is that we really, triple extension is ultimately achieved. That ankle kick, that final ankle kick before front foot strike is really where we ha we hit our peak acceleration. So if we have opened up just a little too early, it really, really kills uh, that acceleration, that that it, that last little push at the end, where really most of it happens. So, I really believe that that's the timing of pitching. Those who don't have the timing down and just don't have the velocity, but are you know, ultimately just need a mechanical adjustment. It's usually in the fact that they're just opening too early and they're not allowing uh, that full triple extension to really at the last second through that ankle kick to really accelerate into the front foot, really that last little pop. I mean, you'd probably jump up the majority of your speed at that point, and if you opened up already, you're screwed. So I'll show you what I mean when we get to that point. So you could close off more, and that'll get your weight forward, your hips out, and, and allow you to stay closed longer. All right, so let's take the Japanese picture into the load. So you can see, I really like this. I like... I, you know, I've been playing with it in my delivery. Even I, I throw my pitch today. I'm playing with it a little bit. It's fun. See how they extend the leg. 
I mean, this is pitcher's been doing this for years, and it, what it does is it keeps you close. So because you're wanting to from here to there, you're wanting to throw your leg open. So to fight that, extending that leg keeps those knees together and keeps your hips close. So you can see his hips haven't gone anywhere. They've stayed pointing to you know shortstop pretty much. So you you've got that good forward momentum. So he's moving forward and he's extending that leg to keep those hips closed. And then look, he just moves into that load position really well. That front leg stays closed really long and allows him to pick up a lot of speed because a lot of guys at this position, their front foot would be out. They would be reaching for the ball, reaching out with that front leg. You just don't accelerate as well. This is the ultimate way to accelerate is to almost simulate a fall, uh, falling forward, staying strong on your drive leg, and, and really kind of closing that or extending that leg just to prevent it from wanting to go until the last second. So he doesn't go. His front leg doesn't move forward until right there. It, that's when it starts to go. And look how far out he already is. I mean, that's awesome. So when he gets into that low position before triple extension, we can see his right here. And look at that force vector has been following him and driving him the whole way. That ankle to knee is, is, is lined up heading towards that target. So let's take Cameron. You know, Cameron does, you, you also extend the leg. So you could do better here. You just need to, when you extend your leg, keep your knees together and let your hip go. You're extending your leg and then sweeping your leg out. So you're sweeping it out too early. You haven't built your momentum yet. Just watch your back leg. You're just squatting. Now you're starting to, to move forward, but it's a little too late. You need to, from the get-go, right when that leg starts to come down, you need to keep extend that leg, keep the knees together, and really start to kind of fall. Try to throw your your hips to the target is, you know and get it going and then just take it and, and continue to load on that drive leg now you, you got you have that force vector moving in line it looks like you're getting out here but the problem is is it looks like yes yeah, so you're just collapsing on that back leg you got to make sure that you're holding it firm and strong and you're building flexion for the launch trying to kind of just like a vertical i call it a linear uh, jump, not a vertical jump, but you're just like a vertical. You're going to flex down. You're going to drop down just at the sweet spot and then fire up because if you don't put that flexion in your legs, you'll never get extension. But that's where how we generate power in here. And you're, you're as you're moving forward, you're just kind of letting your leg collapse. See that collapsing of the leg? It's just collapsing. See how it's collapsing down? Watch the Japanese pitcher. Watch his drive leg. You're not going to see any of that collapsing. So as he's moving forward, he's sitting strong. This is his, his gun back here, and it's staying strong. And see, now it's not, once the force vector got in line, it stayed right there. It's got to stay strong. It's ready for the launch now. And then, boom, let's move into triple extension. And then, boom, look at that. This is this is really where he accelerates. And look at the foot. The foot is closed. It's pointing the knee. It's pointing towards the dugout. It's still closed. So that, where's, here's the belt buckle. And then watch this ankle kick. Ankle kick. We still see the belt buckle. Okay, now it's starting to rotate because now we've got full triple extension. Where now he's landing at the same time. He's landing. The front leg stabilization is going to push back the other hip, and there goes the belt buckle. We got we got uh, the hips completely open, and his shoulders are com are completely closed right there. So that's like that's why I stopped and grabbed his video because look at this beautiful triple extension. Hips completely open to the target, shoulders still closed. He's about a foot, foot and a half off the rubber. So that power has pu pushed him off the rubber, made him closer to the hitter, which adds a foot adds two to three miles per hour perceived velocity. And he's got the hips open and creating that great hip to shoulder separation. So you'll see the difference here is Cameron just collapses on the back foot. So you're using instead of a drive, you're just falling and internally rotating. Okay, and then you land. So you land and you, you have your hips, your, your leg, it's not really extended because your ankle never did anything. It never pushed through. And that's just when you just kind of roll on your back toes, it never pushes through. So your hips, you land, your hips are cl still closed. We can see that belt buckle is pointing to the third base. And then you stabilize and they come through but not as explosively. So basically, Cameron, your, your, your approach to velocity with your 
twisting the back leg or internally rotating the back leg would be kind of like in hitting the old squish the bug. You know, there's a lot of hitting coaches that are against squish the bug because all you're doing is just turning your back foot. Well, that works with young kids who really don't understand the concept of rotating their hips. But when we get older and we want to become power hitters or we want to hit for power or some power, we know that we have to then shift weight. And that weight shift from right foot to left foot is supposed to have more of an effect on hip rotation than just the squish the bug. So it's kind of the same approach you're doing here. You got the squish the bug approach, which is really to me a little league approach to throwing. But you know what? I see guys do it in big league ball just because they're so damn big. I mean, there's just these. Every, I've never seen a little guy do it. Let's just put it that way. Every guy in big league ball who does the squish the bug or the, just internally rotates the drive leg, they don't throw hard. I mean, they don't throw. They're 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 you're, they're usually about six three, six four, um, and they're usually like you know ninety to ninety five guys. I don't see them being the ninety five and up guys. You know, like Chapman, who's a big guy, and and uh, Felix Hernandez, who's a big guy, and um, but you know, some of the guys will see there's a mod, there's they kind of have a you know a, a blend of both. They'll they'll rotate and then push just a little bit, but not as effectively. So, um, you might want to just find your happy medium. So basically, here's the other example. So you're the squish the bug. Here's the other example, which is my approach: triple extension. It's the full drive. And like I said, I find most little guys do it. And the reason they do it, they don't have the leverage, so they have to make up for it in, in power production. So he's got more power production uh, through his stride than you do, but you have more leverage because of your size. So, Because look where you are. So you land and you were able to get your, your, your hip slightly through because you internally rotated as opposed to keeping it on the rubber. If you would have landed like this, look how close your hips are. You, your belt buckles to to third. So here when you when you rotate you get them open just a little bit. But the problem is the push what it does is it puts more weight into your front leg because your front leg is ultimately what finishes off the rotation. So we put more weight in the front leg that hits the ground, bounces back up the body. The, if the leg stays stable then that pushes the hip through. So watch here. Watch when he lands, the Japanese pitcher lands. Watch this hip over here. So now he lands and stabilizes. Now you see how it's it's like pushing back. It's kind of like a it's kind of like a car crash. You know, it's like this is the car hitting the wall, and the wall doesn't move. And now everything just slams into the wall, but the the wall doesn't move, and it almost looks like it's pushing back into the car. You don't have that going on because you don't have as much weight because you didn't drive off the mound or or triple extend and accelerate off the mound. You just kind of fell and rotated off the mound or internally rotated. So you don't have that drive there. See, what the problem is, is look at the difference here. Okay, let's watch your belt buckle. Closed. Watch when it opens. It's open here. So that's the point of it opening. Now let's watch the Japanese pitcher. Okay, here's his belt buckle. Let's wait till it gets completely open. Which is, okay, so which is there. About right there. Okay, so this is the point when he opened. This is the point when you opened. Look at the difference. His arm has not even moved from the cock position. It's it hasn't even initiated. It hasn't activated. It's still it's still waiting. And so he has separation. So his hip, we can see his right hip and his right shoulder is back towards second base. So there's a separation here. So there's torque here. This the stomach is tightening and torquing, and that's going to have a more explosive effect on the arm on launching the shoulders and then transferring that power up the drive leg into into the ball you are already throwing the ball so you don't have that good hip to shoulder separation and as you can see here you don't have a lot of external rotation on your arm watch when the Japanese guys when his shoulders go now now his shoulders go with all that torque look at that external rotation his is completely flat yours we can see is not as well externally rotated Watch where the Japanese pitcher finishes. He gets that good internal rotation. Look at the front leg's extension. And, you know, he keeps that, basically that wall not moving. So everything is jumping out over it. If this front leg moves, we had lead knee flexion, we would lose velocity. So watch watch you to release. You, you're sitting behind this. Uh, your leg's not moving, which is, which is good, but you're sitting behind this bent leg. It's not as effective as if that leg pushed into your hips. That would actually launch more of that power up your body.
And you can just see you're just a lot of a road, you're a rotational pitcher. Okay, look at the front hip. The front hip rotates open, not much drives. And then here's the glove side pulls through to rotate this around. And you, and then here comes your back leg flying around here. So you have a lot of swivel and rotation in you. The problem, well, I believe that power is ultimately uh, more effective than, than rotational forces. You know, we convert the power into a rotational force, but it, basically more directional. If we can get our body moving more to that target, because then we're going to actually have potentially be able to put more uh, velocity towards that target because when things are rotating they're pulling away from the target so your your hips are, are you know your front leg landed and your knees see it how it's going this way see your knee watch your front leg knee so you land watch I'm gonna put the mouse where your foot landed so look at your knee so your knee is actually going to first base okay now watch your glove side your glove sides pull into first base okay watch your head your head's pulling over to first base Okay, you're finishing over to first base. So you have a lot of momentum going away from the target, and it's not as efficient and effective in generating, hitting your top velocity because you're taking your momentum, your energy away from the target because you're just over-rotating. I call it over-rotating. Instead of being more directional and focusing that energy and power straight to the target through triple extension. So that triple extension starts the directional force into front foot strike, which rotates the hips in the same direction then launches the shoulder in the same direction and finishes the release in the same direction. So look, you don't see him like you. Look where you're finishing. Look where your back shoulder is. It's on the other side of your left foot. His back shoulder is probably on the inside of his right foot. So he's more directional, you're more rotational. Potentially he can generate more velocity than you because he's using more uh, the forces, the power forces in that, in keeping you know, a more directional approach to building the, you know, power. Okay, I'm not confusing you. He, he's basically like a race car going straight at the target, and you're more like a, like a, you know, merry-go-round, you know, swinging away, uh, you know, in, in, a, in a direction away from the target. So it's just really two different approaches. So I, I was kind of using your video here as an example, those that are watching it, to kind of see two different approaches to pitching, because you will see guys like Cameron out there, but... Um, if they're hard throwers, it's because they're big guys. You won't see little guys throwing like Cameron. I promise you. I would love to see someone show me a little guy throwing hard with a more rotational approach to the pitching delivery. They're all going to throw like the Japanese pitcher, pitcher here. And I ultimately, ultimately believe, I don't care how big you are, if you learn to throw like this guy, you'll throw gas. Great example, Chapman. Big guy who uses directional forces to rotate his hips, create separation, but everything's built around the rotational force, which is triple extension, and therefore he's the hardest thrower in the game. So that's that's my point. But ultimately, if if you're looking for a program uh, to to learn this approach, the three X pitching loss program in in my book is is the best one you're going to find. Um, it you know I've developed the the term three triple extension, the force vector, and how that affects hip to shoulder separation and how that really ultimately adds a lot of velocity or allows you to really ultimately really increase your velocity. And then it comes with my strength and conditioning program, which I used in my career uh, to, to overcome rotator cuff surgery and to really uh, get my velocity to where doctors said it would never be. And it's, it's just an awesome, awesome program. It's probably the bread and butter of it, along with actually, I mean, the throwing program is just as effective. It's a unique throwing program that um, focuses around these 3x mechanics and really helping you develop the motor coordination around triple extension, hip shoulder separation, and stuff like that. So, um, I appreciate you uh, sending your video and, and um, you know, wanting the analysis, and I, and I wish you the best.